Hi everybody, it's Kayla, and welcome back to Speed Build Someday. That's right, folks. Today we are attempting the Simsy Shell Build Challenge. I did my own build challenge, and yes, I intend to win. I get to pick the winners, and I picked myself. I'm gonna enter 10 times, and all 10 winners are gonna be me. <laughs> I'll link the rules and the video down below if you wanna play this challenge. Basically, it's a shell house. And so I built this big empty box of a house, right? It's this kind of weird two-story, weird-shaped box thing. And the challenge is that you have to use my existing shell and turn it into a house. There's a lot of rules involved as far as like changing walls go. Like, you can't change any of my existing walls. Yes, you can add half walls and fences and stuff. You can't touch my existing walls, though. If you're curious about more of the rules, you can look, watch the video down below. But like I said, just don't touch the existing walls. It's on my gallery, hashtag Simsy Challenge if you want to play it and stuff. I'm picking winners in like two weeks, three weeks-ish when I get back. We're talking like around the 24th of April <laughs> when I get back in, in mid-finals week. So just bear with me on that one. But basically, I have this house. There's a weird box in the middle of it. There's weird boxes all over it. And the goal is to turn it into an existing house. I've seen so many pictures of your houses on Twitter and stuff. And there's so many different styles that have been gone for. There's modern houses. There's like suburban type houses. Houses, there's craftsmen's kind of like this one that just the level of creativity is so fun to see you guys And so again hashtag simsy challenge on the gallery if you post one of these I'd love to look at them I'm gonna pick ten winners and give away a stuff pack so rules are down below watch that video first to like get a good idea and then come back but it's so fun to stream this because people come in they're like hey so you, can't, you said I can't change the walls but like can I change the walls <laughs> So the rules, I'm like, guys, don't touch this box in the middle. And they're like, okay, but like, can I move the box in the middle? <laughs> the only rule is to not change the walls. Just don't touch the walls, okay? And people are like, okay, but can I add fences on the outside? Yeah, go for it. Just don't touch the walls. <laughs> like, they can, they can like, touch against the walls, but don't change my wall into a fence. The walls have to stay the same. It's a shell house. You can add windows, you can paint the walls, you can add a roof, just don't touch my walls. <laughs> but anyway, this was so hard. I realized as I did it that I made a very difficult shell challenge and I was the one who made the challenge. And so the fact that I had trouble doing it, I've tried it twice now, this is the first attempt. The second attempt was a blue suburban sort of house, kind of as a joke. And so you can rotate it, you can move it on the lot and stuff like that. And so I, I tried to rotate it and use a different side as the front for that one. And it was really difficult. The floor plan is the issue because it's sort of a weird shaped house and that box in the middle is in the weirdest place. I did it because I liked the idea of having that challenge of the box in the middle to like make people be creative and work around it because that's the kind of the fun part of picking someone who did a really cool build is seeing who used that box in the middle the best. I've seen people do like hallways out of it. I've seen it become like some sort of terrarium thing. People put the stairs in there. You can put like a basement staircase in there. I, there's a lot of ways to do it. I used it as part of a bathroom, so I have like an archway from a bigger bathroom and there's like a toilet and shower in there, kind of like a water closet, but a little bit bigger, and so it ends up being sort of like a laundry room separate to, it's, it's interesting, you'll see it in the end, but it took me a long time to figure out because it was in a weird place, and the, the floor plan itself took me forever, I cut out an entire part, it took me like 20 minutes to do the upstairs, and I ended up moving the staircase so I had to redo the whole thing. <laughs> So I um I cut out that part of me making mistakes with the upstairs and then I put it back But it's honestly kind of shameful. How my snapchat went off. I never get snapchats <laughs> Sorry, my phone I don't even know why it wasn't on silent, but either way It's kind of shameful how hard this challenge was for me given the fact that I'm the one who made it, but it's fine <laughs> It worked out just fine. I liked the interior a lot. People make fun of me a lot now recently because I've been doing a lot of like beige sort of interiors with like more neutral color schemes. And I don't know how to escape this because like I just, this is what a normal person's house looks like, okay? <laughs> like white walls, gray walls, beige walls. That's just the way people's houses are. And I, I don't know how to, but like people are like, oh my god, another brown house, Kayla. Well, the, the, <sighs> What, do you want it to be blue again? Like, what, what? I can't win. But I haven't built a blue suburban house in so long, so at least give me some credit there, okay? The beige craftsman is the new blue suburban. No, it's not. I'm not, I don't have, the, listen, I don't have a thing anymore. I am I make interesting creative builds. I made a clown house last week, okay? Li that's not a blue suburban or a beige craftsman, okay? <laughs> Anyway, you guys can see by the floor plan that I had a really hard time with this one I ended up putting like a guest room sort of area downstairs and there's I believe four bedrooms upstairs So it's a pretty big house. It's a five-bedroom house. I think there's three or four bathrooms in it So it's definitely a decent sized sort of family home. I got to use a giant round table I never get to use round tables So that was kind of fun to do because I never use them because I always feel like when I want to have a big table I never put a round one because it is just a weird shape 
but I finally started using them. It's one of those things where we didn't always have them, and so since we've gotten them, I just haven't gotten into the habit of using them again because we didn't always have them. Same thing with dishwashers. I always forget to put dishwashers in my belts because we didn't always have dishwashers, so I just got in the habit of not using them. And now that we have them, I kind of forget about them again, which is my bad, but you know, it's fine. It's kind of exciting. To be honest, watching this back is like upsetting me because it was so difficult to do. So good luck to any of you attempting this challenge. I know I've seen many, many posts of builds already. I haven't looked on the gallery intentionally because I'm kind of avoiding checking the gallery for entries until I actually judge them because I feel weird about like checking now, finding ones I like, and then coming back and doing it again in three weeks and already having like in my mind some like bias towards the ones I looked at now and so I'm trying to avoid the gallery looking at them but I did kind of scroll through a little bit and there's already been a lot of entries so it's gonna be interesting to see how many of you guys attempt this over the next few weeks I'm probably gonna regret that to be honest because it's gonna be so hard to pick people that have won um, even just calling them winners is kind of weird to me but like it'll be interesting and the fact that even I could, couldn't do it that well is kind of a concern because I built this and I build every single day in The Sims 4, literally every day. It's become a problem to be honest because like I do, I stream builds on Twitch like every day. And so the fact that I build literally every, I'll spend like three hours a day building no matter what that, and I still can't do some of these things. It's really a concern of mine, but it's okay. To be honest, I've had a lot of fun with that recently. I used to be so opposed to ever building on Twitch, on stream, because the thing about my streams, which, by the way, I stream on Twitch. I don't know if you heard, but, like, I stream on Twitch. But I stream every single day on Twitch, with the exception of Sundays most of the time. But I do come on and stream on Sundays. I'm not supposed to, but I sometimes I'm like, hey, guys, I'm here on Sundays. But, like, I usually try to not stream on Sundays because it's good to have a day off. You shouldn't You shouldn't stream seven days a week. That just doesn't make any sense. That's not healthy, but I have issues with, I can't stop. So like that, either way. So basically <laughs> on stream, I used to hate building on Twitch because the issue with Twitch chat, and it's no fault of anyone in the Twitch chat, but this is just the way it goes, right? Like people on Twitch and in Twitch chat all have an opinion about your build and they want to help you, but like, it's like 700 people in chat all being like, no, do this instead. No, Kayla, do this instead. No, your build is ugly, do this. Hey, you tried doing this yet? And it's a lot of times like things that I've done, they've just like shown up now and so they haven't seen it before. Or they're like trying to help but it comes across in like a really mean way like a, hey, um, the wallpaper's kind of ugly, can you fix it? <laughs> and then I'm like, oh my god, there's like 700 opinions, help me. And it would stress me out a lot. But now, I'm okay with the build opinions. It's cast that it becomes a problem. So I never like to stream creative sim stuff on Twitch. And again, it's nobody's fault. It's just like the nature of Twitch chat and like the nature of me getting anxious about this sort of thing. But when I stream creative sim stuff, people like have some sort of unintentional bias, right? Where like if I'm making a sim and maybe she's like this cool girl who only wears pantsuits, you know, like she hates dresses, hates skirts, only wears pantsuits, and you give her like a suit for a formal outfit, the chat's all like, um, give her a dress instead. This is ugly. And you're like, but that's not, this is, I'm trying to make a sim. She's a cool sim. She wears pantsuits. And then the chat's like mean about it, but they don't mean to be mean about it because they're kids and like they don't, and they're just trying to like, I don't know, but it, it sucks <laughs> basically. And so I don't like, and it's weird because with a build, oftentimes if you're like making fun of my build, that's on me to like get upset and take it too, to, I don't know, like if I take that the wrong way and I'm like, oh, you call my wallpaper ugly, how dare you? But like when it's a cast thing and people are like, your sim's ugly, fix it. It's like, well, if you think her nose is ugly, there's probably someone in the chat that's got a nose like this. So yikes, <laughs> you just called them ugly. Um, and then I feel bad about it and it makes me uncomfortable. And so basically I just don't like to stream cast. But I need to get over myself, because that's not even a big deal. It's just a touchy subject, you know? And also, now that I look at this build, unrelated. I love the landscaping. <laughs> I had so much fun landscaping this house. I liked the the flowers I used, the ones from Romantic Garden stuff. I, like, pretty rarely use Romantic Garden stuff, because I always try and limit my pack builds. I limit my pack builds. What? Oftentimes when I'm building, I try to limit packs. So instead of using like 20 packs, I'll try and pick like, okay, I'm going to use today cats and dogs and bowling night stuff. And I only use those two packs. And so, cause that way it makes it more accessible for you guys to download. And I don't always do that, but I oftentimes, and like, especially recently have been doing very limited pack builds, um, intentionally. And so because of that, I've been using a lot less of a lot of packs, like romantic garden stuff and dine out and stuff like that. Because if there's only like one item that I can use from the pack, I'm not going to use it. And so romantic garden stuff, I might use like one of the flowers, but nothing else. And so I'm just not going to use it. 
and also the dine out plant i only ever use that one plant like the tall kind of it looks like a fiddle leaf fig sort of plant you know what i'm talking about i always used to use that plant because i've been limiting my packs i haven't used it at all because i'm only going to use that one item from the pack so like why would i use dine out and so i kind of like gave up on that whole limited packs thing with this build and so i use romantic garden stuff i use dine out <laughs> I had so much fun. It's like you're discovering new things in the game again Because I've been using that one base game plant for forever because I just haven't been using any other packs And we don't have many like plain plants like there's a lot of flowers and stuff But I need like some plain medium-sized taller house plants Just more plain bushes in game in general for the outside too because we don't have very many plain bushes and it's hard to landscape because we have so many flowers, but we don't have many just like plain filler sort of bushes. I use the same low-lying plant in every single build, but it'd be nice to have some more like just green. Just some green fillers for my landscaping. Because I, I complain about it all the time, but it's so hard to make landscaping not look too busy in The Sims. Because you, you try and pick, at least in my mind, if you have like four different colors of flowers happening, it looks so weird. It's just so much. And like you can pull it off in some builds, but I feel like most of the time in real life, especially in my house, is often kind of reflect what I see in real life, which like with the color schemes and stuff too. But in real life, you won't always find like people having like very dramatic, like here's my millions of flowers in my land landscaping and stuff you find more casual things like this with like a lot of green bushes and stuff like that and then maybe some flowers a few flowers and so I just have a hard time <laughs> making it work with what we have as far as landscaping goes so just basically EA can I have more bushes if you would just give me access I know you made the assets to put in the world okay if you could give me access to those things like in Strangerville especially there's a ton of new bushes in Strangerville but like we don't have access to any of them they make these things put them in the environment around you and then you can't match them to your existing house so especially in Strangerville because they'll use like an existing plant but recolor it so all the trees in Strangerville we have the tree but they're all like not as green as the tree that we have so when you place the tree down it looks so out of place because it's like a way brighter green and it doesn't look nice and they use a bunch of like cool kind of like bushy cactus things and stuff like that and we don't have anything like that and so you just can't match the landscaping in Strangerville their rock color is even different. Like we only have like what, like three or four rock colors, maybe three rock colors. And then they'll use a different one in the world and then we can't match it. And in Strangerville, in one of the lots, oh, I was complaining so much about this, but I was trying to renovate that awful, like the big yellowish and red colored house in Strangerville. I was trying to renovate it on stream the other day and they use this gravel pathway leading up to the lot, right? And it looks really cool. And it's like, oh, I can actually blend this in and make like a cool driveway kind of thing because it exists in the world. And then you use our gravel trying to make a driveway thing. The gravel they use and the one that we have, they're the same, but slightly different colors. So when you go and like you kind of continue their gravel path, the color changes. So why on earth, <laughs> why on earth would that happen? Like why couldn't they just use the, our gravel for that? Like the color change is so minimal. What, why, why? I, that was so frustrating because then you're trying to blend it in and like try and make it work But like the gravel is two starkly different colors and it leads up onto the lot like it touches the lot It's on the lot it like overlaps with the lot line and then you try and ma like match this really cool gravel driveway Like the the world in Strangerville is so pretty But then it, and you have all this power because like we don't really have driveways per se anywhere else in the game Like it doesn't really none, none of the pathways line up with the lot. There's a lot of like grass spacing because there are no cars, so there's no, no need for driveways, but like there's actually entryways to the lots in Strangerville. And, um, but they use different colored gravel, so it doesn't even matter. <laughs> it's so frustrating. I know that's like a really dumb complaint to have, but like why on earth couldn't you just use the same gravel? I just, or, or give us a gravel recolor. Like it's not hard to recolor these things. <sighs> Sorry, I'll get over it. It's fine, <laughs> everything's fine, I'm okay. I'm like super okay. You know what else we need that we don't have? Another dumb thing. This is like a really weird dumb one. Foundations. We only have one brick pattern on, there's two brick foundations. Well, there's a few of them, but it's like one set of brick. It's the one that has like the kind of like plain, very strong, harsh red brick. There's like a solid black brick and a solid red brick with no, cause usually there's like a white grout kind of thing in between them. So like that swatch. If you guys are familiar with the Sims build mode, you know what I'm talking about. But we only have like this one sort of brick foundation. There's that and then there's the one that has the weird diamonds on it. But it's really impossible to match your foundations, your brick foundation to the brick on your walls because we only have like the two kinds of brick. And there's like a ton of brick options in game 
but not any matching brick foundations. And like, it's kind of frustrating when you're trying to build a house to not have options that match. Like, especially with a simple thing like that, like with brick, I feel like it wouldn't be that hard to add a recolor swap. Like, I don't know. I know that's a really weird request, but like, it's frustrating to not be able to, not be able to match it. And I don't know how to fix that problem. <laughs> See, and I realize these are very, very limited problems. Like, no one else cares about this. Unless you're like a really avid Sims builder, you probably haven't even noticed these things. <laughs> but I notice them. I build every single day. And the curtains, oh god, we have awful curtains. We need better curtains. And I hate, here's another thing, okay, when you size down curtains, so say there's like a medium wall height curtain, right? And you want to size it down, make it smaller so it fits on a short wall height, and make it like a little bit skinnier by sizing it down, right? So you size it down, but you can't place the size down curtain on a short wall height because it like auto clips, snaps, and stays stuck to the top height where it was before. And so you can't move it lower at all. You can't lower curtains. And I think it's because the game thinks that it's bigger, and so like, it's just like a visual glitch that when you make it smaller so you can't lower it down, but it's really frustrating how you can't with, even with move objects, you can't move it down. And so the curtain just stays stuck floating above the wall height. And so you just can't use the medium wall height curtains anywhere else. And it's really hard because we have such limited curtain options. It'd be nice to be able to like size them up and size them down and move them around and make them work in other contexts, but we can't do that. And it's frustrating. Same thing with mirrors, you can't lower mirrors. And I think I understand why you can't lower the curtains because again, the game thinks they're bigger. It's the same thing when like, if you size down a rug, you can like click outside of the rug and still click on it because the game thinks the rug is still that full size, but it's actually smaller visually. So it makes sense the curtains are still stuck up there. But mirrors, I don't get why you can't lower them on the wall <laughs> because you can raise them, you just can't lower them. And I don't understand, I don't get it, I don't get it. I could sit here and complain about little tiny build mode things forever. I even have a whole video where I complain about build mode. It's just called everything wrong with the Sims 4 build mode. And I complain about all those little things. Actually, I don't think I mentioned those things in that video. I mentioned a lot of other things though. I complained a lot. I have a lot of things to say. <laughs> I've got a good, um, a good passion for complaining if you will. It's kind of a bad thing, but also kind of a good thing. I also, people are angry that I made that video. Here's, can I get preachy for a second? Oh my god, listen. So whenever I do this stuff where I'll like complain about The Sims 4, I get comments from people that are like saying that I shouldn't be complaining because I'm a game changer and that I'm going to lose my game changer status because I because I complained about The Sims. If you don't know what that means, I'm a, I have the EA game changer program. I'm part of it, right? And that's where they give out early access. They like sometimes will invite you to events um, and stuff like that. So that's how I get invited to like Sims Camp to play new packs before they come out. They'll send me a pack before it comes out and stuff like that. And so people, whenever I criticize the Sims, are like, you're going to get removed from the program. And I think, first of all, that's really dumb. <laughs> and second of all, that's really concerning. If, if you can't criticize a game, like, the whole point of having game changers is, one, is promotion, right? Because then they have people posting videos before it comes out, kind of getting the hype up. But two, it's for people to play test and give opinions and feedback on the game. Like, if even I can't criticize The Sims 4, <laughs> like, that's really scary. If they're going to be that intolerant of criticism at all, that they're going to kick game changers because they've said a bad thing about the game. So don't worry. <laughs> Me complaining about build mode is not going to get me kicked out of the program. Um, I promise you it won't. And if it did, we'd have a big problem. So don't don't even worry about it. Don't even worry about it, okay? But it, I just, it's funny when I get comments like that because that's scary. Like the reality of that is really scary. If people can't accept criticism at all, yikes. <laughs> Especially a, a game company that's trying to sell their products. And I'm a, a big consumer of their products. And I have a voice that speaks to many of their consumers of their products. So yikes. But either way, it's fine. Speaking of um, me being so famous, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so the other day, I, I forget if I told a story on YouTube already, but like, I might have. Who knows? Honestly, I don't know. I'm gonna tell it like four times, so get used to it. But I, I posted a picture. I've been a, a lurker on Reddit for a really long time. I, I'm on Reddit fairly often. I just don't post on Reddit because I, for, I don't post anywhere. I don't post on Twitter or Instagram. Like I post on YouTube every single day and on Twitch every day, I guess post, stream, whatever. But like I don't post elsewhere, you know? And so I'm a big lurker across all social media platforms. Um, and so I've been lurking for a long time on the Sims subreddit. R slash The Sims is a fun place. There's some fun and fresh things on there. But I've always been kind of scared to like actually speak up on there. And I finally posted a picture the other day. I was like, you know what? 
I'm gonna post one of my builds. I saw that someone posted this really cool hospital build. You know, I'll link it down below actually, because this was one of the coolest builds ever in the entire world. They rebuilt the hospital that came with Get to Work and it was so good. Like the picture they had for one, like the screenshot, it was raining and the lighting was really cool and they had to edit it and it was just, it was a really good screenshot and the hospital itself was amazing. Like, you know when you see Sims builds and you're like, genuinely, how did you do that? Like, you are so talented. <laughs> you, like, invented this thing in your brain, and it's the coolest thing in the world. I don't know. People are really cool at The Sims. People are so good at, and talented, and I'm just not. But either way, I saw the picture, and I was like, you know, I can post pictures of my builds on, on Reddit. I'm kind of curious what will happen, and I can get karma for it. So, like, why not? And so I posted a picture of that Mediterranean mansion I built on Reddit, and I got a bunch of comments. Well, a few comments. One of them was like, hmm, Lil Simsy built this. Like, interesting. <laughs> and then one of the mods of the subreddit contacted me. They like locked my post and stuff and they're like, hey, um, you're gonna get banned unless you prove that you're Lil Simsy. <laughs> because they're, they like basically accused me of impersonating Lil Simsy, which is fair enough, like a reasonable assumption to make that I was impersonating Lil Simsy because how would they know? But I just thought it was really funny that I got accused of impersonating myself. And so I fixed it. I showed him a screenshot. I, I posted a comment on my own gallery, like post of that build. I was like, this is this is me. I put this on our slash The Sims, I swear. <laughs> I'm not impersonating myself, I swear. And I showed it to them and then I got fixed and stuff like that. But I just, it was weird because, you know, like, when you get scolded by authority, you're, like, scared and you, like, get upset and stuff like that. Like, that is your initial reaction. I was like, oh, God, I'm in trouble. I did something wrong. <laughs> but I didn't do anything wrong. I am Lil Simsy. But I was like, oh, no, I got caught. <laughs> and it was funny. Uh, but I fixed it. It's fine. Don't even worry about it. They didn't even yell at me. Like, I act like they, I got in trouble. I didn't even get in trouble. They were just kind of like, hey, unless you can prove that you're a Lil Simsy, because, like, we have reasonable doubt that you are her, you know, but <laughs> they called me popular YouTuber Lil Simsy too. That was kind of fun. A little ego boost, you know what I mean? <laughs> I thought it was a funny thing though. I mean, never have I ever expected to get accused of impersonating myself, but here we are. But either way, that build, the, the hospital build, is so cool. Like, genuinely so cool. It's one of those things where it makes me inspired to try harder at The Sims and, and get better at being a builder because some people are just really talented and I'm jealous and I wish that I was them. I wish that I had that like vision for community lots because I don't know how to build community lots. I, I have like a vision in my head, like an ability to kind of like imagine and create a house build. Like I can kind of like create that in my brain without looking at a reference picture. Does that make sense? Like I need reference pictures for community lots most of the time because I just can't like envision what it needs to look like. But with houses, I can kind of like envision that and make it without a reference picture. But I don't know how to build community lots. And I, I can do it usually and it will look okay, but I just, I feel like it's not as good as other people. And I, I need to have that like ability to envision things. And it's hard because a lot of times like community lots in real life, you look at community lots in real life, but like restaurants in real life and hospitals and stuff like that, a lot of the time, not always, but a lot of the time, they're just like big concrete boxes. Like a grocery store in real life is just a big old concrete box. A gym, big old concrete box. Hospitals too. Like it's really hard to make them look interesting. I mean, they look nice enough in real life, but like the way that those things look in real life, you build that exact thing in The Sims, it's going to be awful. <laughs> and so I just don't know how to do it. I need to find, I don't know, I need some inspo. I need some inspo pics and I need to like... <laughs> sit down and be creative. Maybe I'll build a hospital. Maybe I've been inspired enough by that person on Reddit to build an actual hospital. <laughs> because people build some really cool things on Reddit. Like, I mean, just in general, but like you can see them on Reddit and on Twitter too. If you guys are like interested in The Sims, I know that many of you probably are, but like following some Sims accounts on Twitter and like that subreddit especially, you'll find some really cool things. Because I mean, I just, I love everything about The Sims. I love to like look at it, play it, watch videos on it, watch streams on it, like, and just seeing pictures of really cool builds, especially no CC builds, like the kind of build where you see it and it looks like it's custom content and you realize that it's not custom content, that kind of thing is so fun to see. Because it's like seeing the creativity that went into doing it, like I posted a video recently of a fixer upper, I'll link it down below, but in the beginning I showed off this one build, they made a trailer home, and it looked genuinely, it looked like custom content, like a CC trailer to go in that trailer park in Strangerville. And I, I saw it in the gallery and I thought it was CC, so I clicked on it and downloaded it. And it, none of it was custom content because it had wheels and stuff. They made the wheels by turning, like rotating wall decorations around. And because the back of those wall decorations has like 
things to hang out on the wall, they rotated the wall decoration around and then like used like stacks of them to create a wheel. It was so cool. And like all the decoration they had done on the inside with debug items and stuff like that. Like I had never seen such a detailed, cool build. And I, I toured it in my video. So I'll link that video down below if you want to check it out, like I said. But wow. <laughs> Some people are really talented builders. Like, I think I'm pretty good at making, like, a decent, like, playable family home. But my houses aren't, like, art pieces. Like, my my houses are just, like, Sims houses that you could play in. You know, like a, like a very generic looking home that you could download and put in your world. But some people build, like, really, really cool things. Like, gen like that trailer home, that was art. <laughs> like, you wouldn't play in that probably because it was, it was cluttered and stuff like that. And it was covered in debug things. But it was so cool looking. Like, it's just one of those, like, unbelievable sort of pieces where it's like, how did you do this? How did you pull this off? Man, I'm jealous. One day I'll, one day I'll care enough to do that. One day I'll try hard enough. <laughs> one day I'll spend, like, eight hours building a 20 by 15 lot. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm gonna go now, but make sure to go ahead and leave a like and comment and subscribe and do all those fun YouTube things. And in case you guys didn't know, I post new videos every single day, and so I will see you all tomorrow. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Speaking of build challenges and being really talented and incredible, check out mine, hashtag SimsyChallenge on the gallery, link in the description box. You're welcome, I love you, okay, goodbye!